Hey guys, happy dude here and I wanted to make a very simple video for those who want to build their first custom PC because there are a lot of complicated videos out there and it really is a case of the more you know, the more you realize how little you know. Now the first thing you should choose is which CPU you are going to use. Luckily there are only two options out there, Intel and EMD, but it remains a very difficult choice to make, but I'm going to help. Now EMD performs better in most applications and it's also cheaper than Intel. So I'm going to make this choice very simple for you. If you want the most FPS out of your games, especially at 1080p or Full HD, go with Intel. If you're more into multitasking and rendering and streaming, go with Ryzen AMD. Now, if you are doing both and you are playing above uh, 1080p, like 2K and 4K gaming, and also multitasking, you should go with Ryzen AMD. I also did. Because if you are playing at a very high resolution, the FPS remains the same. Between these two CPUs. So when you have decided which one you are going to take, then it's a matter of which budget do you have uh, to choose which one you are going to buy. Oh, and also something important to note, EMD Ryzen is more future-proof because it supports PCI Express 4.0 for on your motherboard and games are getting more optimized to use more cores instead of the higher clock speeds that Intel have. Now the next thing you should choose is the motherboard. The only thing you need to check is if the socket number is the same as your CPU. With AMD that is AM4 and with Intel it could be um, 1151 or 1200 depending on which CPU generation you have. Then you can also choose how big the motherboard must be. Now ATX is the most common one. But if you want to make a very small computer, you can also choose Mini ITX. Now if you go further into specifications of a motherboard, it can get very complicated to choose one. So if you want to know more about that, I suggest uh, you look up Bolzoid on YouTube. He does a breakdown of every part on the motherboard. Like for instance, we have the VRM here that is very important for the power delivery uh, to the CPU, especially if you want to overclock it. Other important features to look out for are how many pins do you have for the fans, if you find that important. You also have the functions like um, wireless Wi-Fi, Bluetooth and the more features you have on a motherboard the more expensive they get and also every brand like MSI, Asus, Gigabyte, Aorus they all have their own uh, BIOS so prefer which one you like you can search them up on YouTube now it also seems logical to me that if you have a $500 CPU that you don't buy a $100 motherboard. And also the other way, if you have a $300 CPU that you don't buy a $1000 motherboard, you can but it's a waste of money. Now I went for the X570 Ultra from Aorus uh, because it had the best VRMs and also it's very future proof 
it has Bluetooth, Wi-Fi ready, PCI 4.0 and it also has RGB and the new 4000 CPUs from AMD will fit on this motherboard. Okay, and now it's time to choose the most important thing in your PC, if you want to game, of course, and that is the GPU. For now, we have two choices, NVIDIA and AMD. Intel is also working on a GPU, but we don't know when it's coming out. Um, I can tell you right now that NVIDIA is probably the best choice, because they are the most stable, and also has the most features, but it also is the most expensive. Uh, but the new 3000 series is coming out, and the price performance there is really, really good. Now, if you have a Intel system or a AMD system, it doesn't matter which one you're going to take. Now, if you are on a tight budget and you're gaming at 1080p, then it doesn't really matter which GPU you are going to get because your CPU will do most of the work. But if you want to game at 4K resolution, you will need a very expensive GPU because your GPU will do most of the work. But that doesn't mean you can pair your expensive GPU with a very cheap CPU because then you can create a bottleneck. That means that your CPU is holding back the power of your GPU. But I assume if you have the money for a very expensive GPU, you will also have the money for an expensive CPU. Okay, the next thing on the list is the storage. I recommend you use a SSD as your main drive because it's not that expensive anymore and a hard drive will hold back the performance of your PC. And this is an M.2 drive. You bolt this directly to the motherboard. Now, the advantage of an M.2 drive is that it can write and read data a lot faster than an SSD. And you don't have extra cables running in your PC, so that makes it extra clean. So, if you're on a tight budget, choose a small SSD for your operating system and your game files and a normal hard drive for all your backup files. But at least choose one with a high RPM like 7200 and a big buffer like 256 megabyte so it isn't slow when you're transfer transferring your files. Um, I can recommend Toshiba because they are the very best in hard drives for M.2 drives or SSD. Uh, Samsung really is the best. So if money isn't a problem, just go with the biggest M.2 drive and then for the rest of all your files, you can buy a bunch of SSDs. Um, the difference in write and read speeds are for this it's about 100 megabyte a second for this it's 500 megabyte a second for this it's 4000 megabyte a second so if you work with rendering of videos those are very big files I suggest you choose an M.2 but if it's for gaming an SSD will do fine. And then there's also the memory. Now I recommend you use at least 16 gigabyte that's more than enough for every game 
that is out now. Now, the best price per dollar for your performance is 3200 megahertz. And then there's also the timings. Now, the lower these numbers are, that means you have tighter timings, so also faster memory. Now, a lot of people say when you have a slow computer, just put in more memory. They say that because it's a very easy and cheap solution, but it's not going to make your computer faster unless, of course, you have like four gigabyte of memory. That's not enough for this day and age. Now, this is the memory speed that I had in my previous setup along with these timings. Now I have 3600 and 15, 15, 15 and 30. I don't notice a lot of difference, but there is a difference if I'm measuring the FPS. But if you have a lower memory speed and higher timings, you can change those numbers in the BIOS. So overclocking your memory is also possible. So if you have very low numbers here and a high number here and here, that's going to be very fast memory, but also very expensive. Now there isn't a lot of gain in performance once you go above 3600 megahertz. So memory speed like 4000 really is a waste of money. Don't worry guys, we're almost there. The next thing is very important also, and that is the power supply. Now, don't take a cheap power supply, because the wattage on the box is not really what it's capable of going to give. So, choose a very good brand like Corsair, um, Seasonic, probably the best out there. Okay, to calculate how much wattage you are going to use, simply go to Google, type in calculate wattage for my computer. You will get a calculator given all the components you have bought for your computer. And then the calculator will give you a number. For instance, if that is 550 watt, I suggest you take a 650 watt. Because if you want to upgrade later, like a new GPU, that is going to need more power. And if you have to change your power supply, you need to rerun all the cables, and that's not really a fun job. Then you also have this certificate right here. 80 plus gold, that means it is at least 80% efficient at loads of 20%, 50% and 100%. You also have bronze, silver, platinum and titanium. Now I suggest you take at least gold that is the standard nowadays. Uh, if you have a very high-end system with expensive components that take a lot of power, I suggest you take platinum or even titanium. That is going to make a difference. And then of course you have to choose a case. Where else are you going to put all your components in? Now choosing a case is very personal. Not everybody likes the same thing. I like it very big, but there's a reason why I went with the biggest case out there. And that is because I want to make a custom dual loop with two reservoirs right here, with two water pumps for the GPU and the CPU. And also you can fit in the biggest radiators in here and also right here 
what I also like about this case is that all the hardware eye candy are in the front and everything that is going to put out heat like the power supply and the radiators are separated in the back right here and also all of the mess of the cables is back there so you have a nice clean presentation of your hardware so choose wisely and that's everything i wanted to tell you i hope you liked the video if you do give it a like and maybe subscribe thanks for watching bye